time, you know, guys. Time has come, huh, Mike? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Time to win a championship. Share with us your emotions, your thoughts about this whole thing. Oh, wow. Can, uh, couldn't be a better opportunity for me to play uh, in this game, uh, in this situation. This, this program breeds championship players from the bottom to the top. I've been ready for this. Coach Norvell does an outstanding job. I mean, I put the same stress on myself last week preparing for Colorado as I did this week. That's just my mentality every single day when we step out outside those practice fields, and I owe that all to the coaching staff. So, you know, like I, like I said before, it's my job to get this team one point ahead when, when the clock's tick zero, and uh, hopefully Taylor gets ready as soon as he can. Coach what kind Norvell, of support have you received from your teammates? Oh, nothing but love. I mean, I do everything in my power every time I, I step on campus, every time I step in my house, outside the house, that I do everything. I bleed maroon and gold. This is, this is something that that I owe to my team, and I know that due to the respect I've given them, they give the respect to me. And uh, I feel that there's no letdown. There's no change in the offense right now. There's everything everything that I can ask for to operate and, and just move the chains. That's what it comes down to. Can you elaborate on that, the fact that Coach Norvell said the offense, the game plan, really isn't going to change? <clears throat> oh, absolutely. I mean, I felt that since I've been here, I've done, I've done everything I can to prepare myself to run this offense. I mean, as you guys see, these first drives that we run, I mean, it's, we're, we're dangerous when we scheme a team correctly. And those coaches are working, you know, around the clock up there. And basically, all I need to do is my job. The quarterback runs this offense, as in many offense, but this one more. And if I make my right decisions, uh, we're just going to keep moving, moving the ball. 50% on third downs, five yards of carry every time we get the ball and explosive plays. It's a strange, I don't know, strange dynamic, but you know, you and Taylor are close. Your opportunity comes when he gets injured. Has that been a challenging thing for you to reconcile? Or no? mm, I mean, like I said, since I've been here, since 2011, I've been sitting on the sideline, I think Brock cramped up the first game against UC Davis, and I'm like, all right, let's, let's do it. So I've had that same feeling every single game. And, you know, I, I feel so bad for Taylor, but I know he's going to get ready. I mean, I've, I've been talking to him. I know that he's, He's eager to already get back on the field. He's already out here. Um, you know, he's in the he's in our, our meeting room, getting going over the, the the plays for this week. And basically, my relationship with him has helped me in this situation because I have such a great relationship with him right now. Uh, prior to this, that one offense, those offensive linemen, Jalen, they know that you know I'm subbing in right now. I'm just I'm doing my part. And basically, I'm a reflection of Taylor. I do everything. I emulate Taylor in everything that he does, from the bag drills to start practice to the way that we finish practice in ball drills, throwing faith, back shoulders. So um, my relationship with him has gotten me to where I am right now. How difficult has it been to, to wait when a lot of people in your position would have just gone to world? Oh, I'm not going to lie, it's difficult. I mean, every, I mean, this this world is based off performance. Everybody wants to be in it. Everybody wants to be the guy. Everybody wants to be the one with the cameras in their face. But basically, I've said this before, my sister's a Sun Devil, I'm a Sun Devil. My parents didn't go to college, but they're Sun Devils, they're adopted Sun Devils. So it's not all everything inside this bubble that's made me, that's made it hard to wait. I have great fans outside of here. When I do, when, when, when it's a spring game and I got little kids coming up to me, you know, saying, oh, you're my favorite quarterback, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that, that's what makes it for me. So that it hasn't been as hard as you would perceive it to be. Um, I'm ready for this opportunity. And, uh, you know, I guess perseverance does. Does work. What's well, different you, about this UCLA defense compared to last year? Uh, not much. I know they had a little change in their defensive coordinator, but within the system. But <clears throat> I mean, there's been times where we've prepared for a team, and we get there out there on Thursday night. It's nothing that we've seen before. So we're always prepared. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt to play against Coach Graham's offense or Coach Graham's defense to start the practice because they do more stuff than anybody in college football. So. You know, it's not much different. I don't know how they're going to, they they probably want to approach it differently with me in there, but I know any, anybody in this program knows that we're just going to keep moving the chains like we always do. Do you think it's an advantage that they don't have any game film on you compared <laughs> to Taylor Kelly? Oh, I mean, uh, I, I'm hoping that I can, uh, we can throw the ball on them, run the ball on them. We can, we can do everything on them. I, I don't think it's an advantage. I just think that this program breeds championships. So if they know anything about the reflection of this program, the reputation of this program, the next guy that steps in line is a champion. And that's what it takes. How do you balance the excitement of getting your first start versus the feeling of your friend and teammate going down with injury? Uh, I mean, it's definitely difficult. It's 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 different for our program. When we step in that team meeting room and Taylor, you know, isn't the guy coming out to practice? He isn't suited up. It's obviously different for the team. And obviously, I have a emotional attachment to you know when he's out here on the field. As you guys see, we have a great relationship. I'm always talking to him. But obviously, um, for the current situation. 
we can't think like that right now. We have to move forward until he's back, and he is going to be back. But I'm excited. I'm ready to, to move this to move this team down the field, get that defense going. You know, get pick sixes for touchdown. I'll be the first one in the end zone cheering him on. Kickoff returns for touchdown. Be the first one to get get him going. You know, I will, we'll be ready. What's Taylor been like since he went down? Nothing changed. Nothing changed. He's one of the greatest dudes I've ever met because if he throws a touchdown, he's almost the same way as something bad goes. And I and I've learned so much, so much about him for that. And basically, you know, I I I, I already know that when something's happening on the field, the first person and my coach Norvell might run to me first, but the first person is going to be Taylor. And because we love each other, this program loves each other, and you know, it's it's awesome. Like, uh, I, I, more than a week to, to prepare and work with the first team that whole time, then start the game with the first team. How much of a difference is that versus the situations you typically come in? I mean, I can relate this back to spring ball where Coach Norvell has done a good job of incorporating me with the ones. I have the same amount. I mean, every, everything we do in individuals, Taylor and I do a good job of kind of like incorporating myself in there because this is, this is football. This kind of stuff does happen. But basically, our footwork, our reads are all predicated off the same stuff. What the offense what the offense does at practice with the twos, the same thing does with the ones. Like I said, I put the same constraint on myself when, when I'm working with the twos with Stephon McCray under center as I am with Nick. It might be a little bit faster because we got, you know, the ones out there. But to me, my footwork's the same, everything's the same. So I've been ready for this for a long time, like I said, because I really do put the the pressure and the constraint on myself that this is an opportunity that I owe to my teammates. If I'm not ready, if I wasn't ready right now, it would be pretty obvious to, to the guys at practice. I think the guys felt nothing but confidence in me after this practice, knowing that it, there's no drop off. If anything, we want to escalate from this. Mike, how exciting is it that your opportunity comes in what many people think is an early Pac-12 South showdown? Game? Oh yeah, I mean, as long as I've uh, as long as I've been in this conference, the winner of this game goes to the uh, conference title, and I think. Obviously, besides those guys down south that wear navy blue and red, if you ask any of our upfront linemen who they want, they want powder blue. You know, they they want to drive those guys down because they, you know, it's a it's an interesting situation every single time we play them because either either it's gone our way or it hasn't, and uh, it's going to go our way this Thursday. When you went into the game on Saturday, did you know the situation with, with Taylor at that time? I actually didn't. You know, that sideline over there at Colorado, if you know anything about it, it's super tight, so you can't really hear anything that's going on. And uh, I thought I was fortunate enough to get in the fourth quarter. I mean, obviously that mop-up duty time for me helps me out whether I'm handing the ball off three times or whatever the case is, taking a knee for victory. It feels good to be out there. It just kind of gets your blood flowing. And I didn't know. I Coach Norvell said, hey, hey, bud, get ready. And you know, he says that to me all the time. And then obviously when I saw the situation, it, it became a little more realistic. But um, nothing changes for me. Nothing changes for me. Like I said, I, as I, when I went out there on the field, same same mindset, same everything as I am going to go Thursday. Your, your roommates, uh, DJ Foster and Jordan Simone, are having a great season so far. Is that also motivation, uh, maybe to have some bragging rights at the dinner table later on? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'd be lying to you if, if I said we weren't competitive, but I love those guys. Those guys, I mean, our DJ's doing a great job, that offensive line. If you just see them walk off the field, you know that there's something special about them. Jordan Simone, we've all known since scout team last year, he's caused us problems for us quarterbacks, being an instinctual player having the scout team work, a guy like that, he just, he makes other people better with his attitude. And us living together, we always talk about stuff. I mean, it's either nap time or it's like, you know, let's let's compete and, and let's let's watch some film, DJ, or, or whatever the case may be. But, you know, they're obviously excited for me, but they're excited for the team. It's, this, is, this isn't really about me. Like I said, this program breeds championships. I'm a guy that needs to go in, step in under center, be a champion in everything I do, the walk, talk, Everything I do, when I come off the sideline, I need to be the same champion that I am on the field. Would you rather go against Hunley or Neuheisen? Oh man, yeah, that, that, <laughs> it doesn't it, it doesn't really matter. All I know is that, like Coach said, when the clock hits zero, if we're up one point, or rather it be 40 points, it doesn't matter who's on the other side. Thanks, guys.